Now, before we go uh, to trans hydroxylation, let's solve some some problem. Suppose you have to solve this, and uh, you have to know by by the reagent osmium tetroxide will carry out cis hydroxylation to this alkene, and how will that happen? That would happen. First, an intermediate like this would be formed and then the bond between metal and oxygen will break and then OSO2 would go away and here we will have two hydrogens. So effectively if I write it properly, we will get this. The two OH group would be on the same side of the molecular plane. Fine. So this is how you would write, or this is how it would be. We will get cis hydroxylation. We will get cis diol, vicinal cis vicinal diol, or we would get a glycol. Fine. Similarly, if we have a cyclic alkene, if we have cyclopentene and we have been given Bayes reagent. Then the product would be H and OH on both the carbon forming the alkene and the OH would be on same side of the molecular plane. Either they will be above the plane or they would be below the plane. Here there is a symmetry, it does not matter. Both would be the same product. So, uh, this is how you would write the product. The two OH groups should be on the same side of the molecular plane. So, that is all from cis hydroxylation. Let us see how trans hydroxylation occur. Suppose I have an alkene and I add peroxy acid. Now, this is acid, this is any carboxylic acid. If we have a peroxy linkage, O single bond O, this is peroxy linkage, then this becomes peroxy acid. Right? First we add peroxy acid and then we do hydration of the whatever intermediate would be formed. We will see what that intermediate would be. But if we do that, we get Transhydroxylation or to show it in a different configuration, the OH group are on different plane of the molecule. So, this is transhydroxylation. Let us see how or why this happens. The first thing, this, this kind of addition, this kind of reaction of peroxy acid, perhaps this is the first time we are seeing a reaction with peroxy acid. And this reaction would be, we would see again in the chapter of uh, uh, carbonyl compounds. But let us quickly see how it is. Now, if you look at the structure of peroxy acid, there are two oxygen. I name it as 1 and 2. First of all, you have to identify which one is basic oxygen, or preferably which oxygen will act as a base. If it comes to donate the electron, which one will donate the electron? Now, if you see at 1, Oxygen 1 is participating in resonance with the C double bond O. So, the ox electron of oxygen is delocalized. So, oxygen number 1 is a weak base. Oxygen number 2 is a stronger base, stronger than hydroxide, stronger than normal water because normally when you have water, you have electron and oxygen and oxygen tends to give the electron. Here also you have oxygen and here also the oxygen will tends to give electron but with a greater force. Because here we are alpha effect is operating in peroxy linkage because there is electronic repulsion between oxygen and oxygen. And we have seen this before when I taught you photohalogenation where peroxide was used as a catalyst and that is why peroxide bond 
is broken very easily with, even with a small in, amount of light. So because there is a repulsion as was the case in the last reaction with KMnO4 and osmium tetroxide here also we are having a repulsion between oxygen and oxygen because of presence of two lone pairs on both the oxygen. So obviously oxygen will try and minimize that repulsion. So how can that happen? Last time we saw that if we have uh, if we had if we had manganese here and oxygen oxygen double bond last time we it minimize the repulsion by having a single bond instead of double bond so its repulsion between single bond and single bond is much less than repulsion between double bond and double bond that's how we succeeded to minimize the repulsion here extending the same idea the repulsion is between lone pair and lone pair if we convert one of the lone pair into bond pair, suppose it gets bonded to one of the atom A, then now the repulsion is between lone pair and bond pair and bond pair are more disciplined and will have a less repulsion than lone pair and lone pair because lone pair are more free because lone pair is attracted by nucleus of one atom, bond pair is attracted by nucleus of two atoms. They are more stringent, stringently bounded to this region of the bond. They are not very stringently bonded to the orbital of this atom. They even come out. The electronic density comes out appreciably to the extent to cause appreciable level of repulsion between this lone pair and this lone pair. So in order to minimize the repulsion, this oxygen, which is a better base, must form a bond and engage that lone pair in a bond so that repulsion would be mitigated. So how does that happen? That happens by forming a bond with alkene because you can't break any other bond. You can break only this pi bond. So if a bond has to be formed, that bond has to be formed with this pi bond. So this oxygen goes and form a bond with this pi bond. So bond formation starts. But that carbon is already tetravalent. That's not going to form a bond unless it's going to break a bond. So the bond cleavage also has to start simultaneously and this carbon is getting negative charge simultaneously. So this carbon is again having a problem. This carbon can do something, can do something. I'm sorry, this is, there's no R here because we have taken peroxy acid. So there's a hydrogen, fine, fine. So this carbon is having a negative charge and this carbon also have to find a way to get rid of that negative charge. So what happens here, see, I'm going to I'm going to show you for the first time and this reaction is going to occur many more times in the chapter carbonyl compound. First of all, let me reorient this molecule for our ease to understand. So let me write this hydrogen on that side and rest of the part on this side. Fine, now it's better. So what would happen is there's an anti-bonding to this oxygen. There's a bonding bond here. So there will be a bonding orbital here. Just opposite to that there will be an antibond just opposite to that there will be an antibond thing orbital fine so when this is happening when oxygen is giving its electron to the carbon this carbon is breaking its pi bond with another carbon that another carbon is generating negative charge which it does not like because it is small atom it has least electronegativity value so it will start to pass that electronic density into the antibonding of this oxygen. When that happens, when oxygen starts to gain electron from into its antibonding, it has to push out some of the electronic density from the bonding, which we have been talking about from time immemorial. Now, since the electronic density in antibonding is increasing, so electronic density from bonding have to decrease. So, electron from this bond will go into the orbital of this oxygen. So finally, when the whole process will complete, this part has to come out because this bond, this bond is under the process of cleavage. So when this cleavage occurs, when the bond breaks completely, this part will come out. And when that happens, what comes out? A acetate ion comes out or a carboxylate ion, depending upon what this R is. A carboxylate ion will come out with a resonance, effective resonance, equivalent resonating structure in this carboxylate ion, very stable molecule, a good living group. So this comes out. What happens here? This oxygen forms a bond with this carbon. And this carbon forms a bond with this oxygen. Right? So what effectively we will have is, this comes out as a living group. And what we get here is, 
may form a epoxy ring, a three member epoxy ring. This is what we would get. So, just to write, whenever a, a, a peroxy acid would be given on an alkene, directly, if this is not given, if this the hydration, we are not carrying out hydration, if I give only peroxy acid on an alkene, that will give a peroxy linkage of three member. That will give a epoxy ring of three member. Three member epoxy ring. That would be the product of this alkene and this peroxy acid.